Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Max with Buzz Talks here, and I am back with a Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 6 preview video. A video where I go through the episode trailer and previous plot points to really predict and theorize what will happen next. And this is a very unique video, because this is the last episode of Game of Thrones. So we've had 8 seasons that lead up to this final episode. And I think the bulk of this story will be reserved in King's Landing. After Daenerys destroyed King's Landing, all that's left is Ash. The majority of the people are dead, her enemies are now gone, but all of her allies have left her. The only people that support Daenerys are now people from Essos, the Unsullied and the Dothraki. So she's successfully taken the mantle of the Mad Queen, and she's successfully taken the mantle as a foreign invader in the eyes of everyone in Westeros. She took over a continent's way of life, and claimed it as her own. And I think the point of this episode is to lead us to the end of Daenerys, and the dawn of a brand new world. And this is going to focus on four key characters throughout this episode. It's going to focus on Jon, who loved and put his faith in a queen that has now betrayed everything that Jon stands for. There's Arya, who has witnessed the devastation that Daenerys has brought to King's Landing, and has probably added one more person to her list. There's Tyrion, who must be responsible for everything that's happened, and he is now following a tyrant that he wanted to prevent. And then there's Daenerys, who's made a complete U-turn and now represents everything she wanted to eliminate. I think these characters will be the focus of the episode, and characters in Winterfell like Sansa, Sam, Brienne, and many others are going to be reserved for the epilogue, where we're going to take a look at Westeros after Daenerys' reign. But first, let's talk about Arya. She was trained as a faceless person, and for a while she's been checking people off her list. She had one final person, and that was Cersei. And because of the Hound, she decided that it wasn't as important. But I feel like after witnessing Arya see the destruction of King's Landing, seeing on the ground level what Daenerys has done to the people and civilians of King's Landing, Arya is probably going to take it upon herself to step up to the plate and try and knock one last person on her list. We see Arya onlooking as Daenerys claims her throne, and it's a very dark world. It's covered in ash. At this point, it looks like it's the opposite of what Daenerys wanted to create. And I think Arya is disgusted because it looks a lot less now like a democracy that Daenerys wanted to create and more like a dictatorship. Now Arya is one of those people who could kill Daenerys. If the writers of the show were going to rely on that prophecy, brown eyes, green eyes, and blue eyes. Blue eyes were for the Night King, brown eyes could be for Walder Frey, and green eyes could be reserved for Daenerys. But I don't think this is going to happen and I hope that this doesn't happen. Because Arya has been the face of everything this season, and Jon has been nothing but a side character. Jon needs to have his one moment this season. And that's why I think Arya's storyline could finish off with family. Her and Jon being together because those characters have such a deep bond. And I think it should focus on their relationship because it is very important. And I think Jon should have his moment to kill Daenerys because it makes more sense story-wise. Because at this point, Jon is beside himself. As him and Davos walk across the destruction of King's Landing, he probably feels responsible. Because he trusted Daenerys, he fell in love with Daenerys. His own men were killing civilians, following Daenerys' leadership. And the key aspect of Jon is he prides himself on his honor, because he respects Ned Stark so much. And because of Daenerys, Jon probably doubts himself. And Daenerys will probably be out of control to the point where Jon has to step up, maybe betraying his honor in the process, to protect his family and protect the rest of Westeros. I have seen myself walk along the battlements of Winterfell. I have seen the flayed man banners lowered to the ground, but sometimes sacrifices must be made to ensure victory. This war has just begun. It will last for years. Thousands will die at your command. You will betray the man serving you. You will betray your family. You will betray everything you once held dear. And it will all be worth it. Because you are the son of fire. You are the warrior of light. You will sweep aside this pretender and that one. You will be king. In this episode, we're going to see Jon betray everything. He's going to betray his honor, something that defines who he is, to kill Daenerys. And it's all because he followed Daenerys and he loved Daenerys. That led him to betray his family, betray the men that was serving him, and betray everything he held dear. Instead of bringing peace, he walks across the destruction that he helped bring to King's Landing. 
And after all that, John's going to betray one final person. I think he's going to betray himself, betray his honor, and then I think he's going to kill Daenerys and betray the one he loves. And based on this prophecy, Melisandre claims that John will be king. Now, based on this writing, I wouldn't be so sure. But as far as I'm concerned, John is the only king who could build a better world. And he's the only candidate who could have effective closure to this series on the throne. I feel like if any other character other than Jon sits on the throne, there will be no narrative purpose to Game of Thrones. What would be the overarching theme? Why were we following Jon for so long? And what's the point of the story? It seems like the point is we're following the journey of building a better world. A world that breaks the wheel, where the rich don't crush on the poor, and power doesn't reside by bloodline. It wouldn't make sense for all this to happen just to have one other unqualified king sit the throne. And I think John represents all of this. Narratively, it seems like it's his destiny. When he was a bastard, he learned perspective. He brought people together. He brought the wildlings together in the Night's Watch. He tried to bring Cersei together with Daenerys. He tried to unite everyone against the dead. On top of that, he's both alive and dead. He's fire and ice. He's a character that represents two sides and everything in between. He also isn't politically concerned. He does what's right no matter what, and that's somebody you need rebuilding Westeros after Daenerys' reign. And that's why it's good that Davos is on his side. He was kept alive by Melisandre for a purpose. And I think that purpose is to be a part of Jon's council, and to spread word for Jon because Jon doesn't promote himself. Unlike Daenerys, Jon needs somebody to get his followship, and to spread the word on what kind of person he is. You need someone to rebuild your army for you. Someone to convince this lord and that lord to fight for you, to bring cell swords and pirates to your side. I've made my decision. He's right. You need him. He has a part to play in the war to come. But I think John making the moves to betray the one he loves, a part of that is going to be because of Tyrion. And Tyrion is going to be in a very similar place that John is. They both wanted King's Landing to be taken as safely and responsibly as possible. Tyrion continued to warn Jon to listen for the bells and call off the attack if that happens. And much like how Jon is probably doubting himself because of his faith in Daenerys, Tyrion must be feeling the same. Tyrion has put all of his support in Daenerys because he believes she could build a better world. And since season 5, he's been fighting her worst impulses and he failed. I will crucify the masters. I will set their fleets afire. Kill every last one of their soldiers and return their cities to the dirt. That is my plan. You don't approve. You once told me you knew what your father was. So Tyrion has effectively brought this tyrant to King's Landing and destroyed it. So I think this episode we're going to see Tyrion drop his support for Daenerys. Because this isn't how you start a better world. And that's the key aspect to Tyrion is that at this point he's still holding to the idea of breaking the wheel and starting a new world. And I think he's a character that will do that after Daenerys' reign. And I think it will start off with a fallout between the characters. I think Tyrion will take off his hand of the queen pin and denounce himself as Daenerys' hand. But I also think Daenerys will put Tyrion in prison and sentence him to death for failing her one last time by letting Jaime live. And she warned him of that last episode. The next time you fail me, be the last time you fail me. But all in all, I think because of Arya, I think because of Jon, that Tyrion will not be executed. And I think when Daenerys is over, Tyrion will be the hand of the king, hand of the queen, or one big main counselor in King's Landing building this new world. And that takes us to Daenerys, who I knew would burn King's Landing to the ground, but I think the writing of last episode almost destroyed her character. But at this point, Daenerys is alone. She has no one. By last episode, she had everyone questioning her leadership. She had her closest allies be afraid of her. And at this point, the perception of her is a foreign invader and a tyrant who's forcing her will on a place she doesn't belong. And this feeds into last episode where she believes that unlike Essos where she can rule by love, here she must rule by fear. And it just shows how backward her mentality is. She feels like she is so meant to sit the Iron Throne that she is willing to be a tyrant to do it. And I think she'll embrace that further. And she's going to embrace that fear on the people who supported her and were closest to her. I think she's going to put Tyrion on trial for betraying her, letting Jaime go. I think she's going to claim that Sansa betrayed her, and she's going to try and put Sansa on trial. Even Jon betrayed her, and Jon isn't safe at this point because his name contests with her claim to the throne. 
which at this point she's proven she'll do anything to keep it. I think on top of dealing with her old council, she's going to summon all the lords and ladies to Westeros to swear fealty to her. And there's a couple things. There's Sansa in the north, who will never support Daenerys, and Sansa's probably smart enough then to come south. And then there's places like Dorne, who Varys has sent out ravens, letting them know of Jon's heritage. On top of that, there's Gendry, who's now the Lord of Storm's End. Daenerys thought that granting him Lord of Storm's End would make him loyal, but I think she'll realize that that's not the case. Gendry will see what Daenerys has done and he won't want to support her. He'll support Jon Snow, because his father, Robert, and Jon Snow's adopted father, Ned, were best friends. And then there's Davos. Gendry is in debt to Davos because Davos saved Gendry's life and has been a mentor and a guardian ever since. So I think here we'll realize is that Daenerys is truly alone. She has absolutely no one supporting her except Grey Worm and the Unsullied, and her Dothraki. So all of her support lies in Essos. And she's going to fulfill her destiny. She's going to be alone in her own destruction. And the throne is going to be just out of her reach. Because even though she's claimed the seat, there's not one person who will choose to follow her. So that's why she's going to be taken down. And last season we saw it snow in King's Landing, and while I think there is ash falling from the sky, I think snow could fall too, on the destruction of King's Landing. Maybe in this episode, winter coming is a good thing. Winter could represent peace, and rebuilding everything that they've lost. But all in all, I think the story is going to wrap up Daenerys' character. Jon is going to betray himself and Daenerys to ensure that she is not Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. Grey Worm is probably going to be killed trying to defend Daenerys. In terms of the Dothraki and Unsullied, I'm not sure. They could be sent home to Essos. But then there's Drogon. And at this point, a dragon cannot be kept alive because of all the destruction that's happened. And Drogon at this point only trusts one person, Jon. I think Jon will be the one not only to kill the mother of dragons, but kill the last dragon as well. And then we'll have the epilogue, which is the building of a new world. And I think it will involve a lot of characters that we've grown to love. I think there'll be Davos, Tyrion, Sam, Bran, and a couple other people that will make up the council that will rebuild Westeros. And I think they're going to effectively break the wheel. So this whole show has narrative purpose. And this could go one of two ways. But regardless, I feel like a leader is going to be elected. First, Jon can be elected as king. And Jon being king represents his entire character. He's been elected for every power that he's ever gotten. And I think finishing the story with Jon being king would be the perfect way to end this story. But at the same time, Jon could renounce his claim to the throne and leave. Go north where he feels like he belongs. And then you have a king be elected that's not based on bloodline, but clearly based on who is right for the throne. But to be honest, I don't think there's a single character other than Jon who would be the right person to sit the throne. The only closest candidate would be Tyrion. But we'll see what happens next episode. The only thing I am really worried about is who will sit the throne. Because at the end of the day, this show has to end with narrative purpose. It needs to wrap up all of the foreshadows, all of the previous plot lines and character arcs for the last eight seasons. And based on the last couple episodes, I'm a little nervous. But we'll see what happens. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Please leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.